Welcome, welcome, welcome back, my fellow stats junkies. This is the second part of our Perito Analysis screencast. Um, my name is Bronwyn, and in case this is the first one that you see, there's a screencast that precedes the screencast. Um, and in that screencast, we had started doing Perito Analysis. I had gone through this, when I ended that screencast, I had gone through the steps and we were, were, were doing a particular problem. I had explained what Pareto analysis is about and we were doing an example and we had gone as far as step number three where we discussed a restaurant problem. Um, Pareto analysis is a prioritization tool and the example that we discussed was it, uh, I pretended I was the manager of a restaurant and over a period of week week one week I had collected data and the data I had categorized into problem sources and I had numbers of problems that stemmed from each of those problem sources and the first thing that I had done to to do my Pareto analysis is I arranged the data in descending order I calculated well I first tallied the total then I calculated the percentage for each of those problems so what percentage of problems came from each one of those problem sources and then we calculated the cumulative percentage. So once we have that data, we'll have it in the form of a table that looks like this and then step number four tells us we can start plotting our Pareto graph. Now the Pareto graph is a very, very interesting graph. In the earlier screencast, I mentioned it's a buy one, get one free graph because this particular bar chart or histogram, you can decide whether you're going to use a bar chart or histogram, has got one x-axis and two y-axis. And so what am I talking about? I think the easiest way to try and explain it is to actually start plotting. So as we see here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight problem sources. So we're going to have eight bars which we'll have on our graph and we are going to put that with two with two variables on the y-axis so on the x-axis we'll have these eight bars and then on the y-axis on the one side which is the the left side will have the actual problem numbers, the number of problems that we see. And on the right side, we'll have the cumulative percentage. And so Pareto is really, really nice. It communicates a lot of data very quickly. By just looking at the picture, someone can understand the situation. So this is something that I prepared. Um, this is what our Pareto chart is going to look like, or we're going to start plotting the Pareto chart on here. Underneath, as you can see on the x-axis, here I will have my eight bars, all these eight problem sources. And on the one or the left side y-axis, I will have the actual number of problems. So this would be the actual number of problems. And the highest problem there is cold food. So it will be at about 105, not at about, it will be exactly 105, so just over 100. I'm looking at, at doing a bar as far as 100. The next one is salad not being fresh, and that would be my second bar, and that would be at 94, and 94 is around about here. And the next one would be lack of cleanliness, and that is significantly lower to the others. Lack of cleanliness is the third bar. It's about there. Um, I see my 94 has disappeared as well as my 25. Um, I then have poor service, which is 13. And so you understand. So I did myself a favor and I've added these bars, these nice neat bars to my chart. I'd have never been able to draw them myself. And it's important that you remember that you label the bars. So cold food would be this one and this is at 90, uh, 105, I beg your pardon. So this is 105. Um, this one is salad, not fresh. Hmm doesn't seem as if my pen is playing nicely with me today. This is salad not fresh, which is 94. 
This is lack of cleanliness, which is 25. And this should also, this bar should also have a, a label. But as you can see, my bar is a bit small and I don't have the space to put that in. Um, but it's important that you label it. And then poor service would be 13. And this corresponds with the left side y-axis. Um, for the food tastes bad, um, which would be 10. Then the food is greasy, which is 9. And the utensils are flimsy which is two and lack of courtesy is also two and these numbers reflect what i see on the left side as i mentioned at the same time i pay attention to the percentage the cumulative percentage which is on the right hand side y-axis so cumulative percentage can only go up to a hundred percent so this one is a hundred percent um eighty percent sixty percent twenty uh, forty and twenty and and what will happen is i'm going to do a line so these bars belong to my left hand side axis. And I'm going to do a line with my pen to indicate the cumulative percentage. So my first bar sits at 40%. So I'm going to do a little, I'll make a mark there, and that's where I'm going to start plotting at 40%. Then my second bar indicates the cumulative percentage of my second bar is 76%. So I'll find 76% and I'll plot it and that's got to correspond with my right hand side axis. The next uh, point that I'm going to plot is 86%. So my third bar sits at 86%. So that little mark is going to be above there. So I believe you understand what it was that I was trying to do. Um, I was drawing the cumulative percentage, or plotting rather, the cumulative percentage. And again, um, I, I have a new diagram on, but just because it's neater than me actually using my own pen. Um, but this mark over here indicates 40% because cumulative percentage is on this side, and that mark would indicate 76%. This mark over here would indicate 86%. That mark over there indicates 91%. This mark over here is 95%, 98, 99, and 100 is my final mark. And so reminding myself now again about the steps to Pareto analysis, we are now actually at step number seven, which is draw the cut of line at 80%. And everything under 80% is what we prioritize as the area that needs our attention. So looking back at the, 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 the graph, the Pareto graph that we've constructed, we, we can see that bar one and bar two is under my 80% cut of line. And those are the two focus areas that we are going to look at in order to solve the problems that we see and we want to address. So now the only thing that's left for us to do is to conclude or to write a report on the findings of our Pareto analysis. And when we write the report on the findings of the Pareto analysis, this is what I suggest that you should do. I think that it's always nice to mention that your findings are based on the Pareto principle or the 80-20 principle. People always find that interesting if you have the time to do that. And you state that by addressing 20% of the problem sources management or yourself, if it's a domestic um, situation, can solve approximately 80% of the problems that you see, the problems that are evident. 
and therefore you should start by addressing the vital few and you can then eliminate 80 percent of the actual actual problems that you see and then you list the problems that need to be addressed addressed and then you can refer to the vital few and the trivial many and in the case of our example the vital few would be food that's cold and salad that's not fresh and those are the ones that will give you the most significant benefit if you fix that um, and you'll maximize the the effort for the least amount of input that you the i beg your pardon you maximize the output for the least amount of input that you put into it so that is my screencast that concludes my screencast on Pareto analysis i hope that you're going to join me again soon for the next screencast that i make thank you so much for taking the time to watch the screencast